once again, one of the most powerful statements made by the cross of Christ is one of choice. God's choice. The cross is God saying, I choose you. It's a beautiful morning here in Bloemfontein, South Africa. And this is Paul and Shannon. <laughs> and we're with you today and want to welcome you to our Hebron Church online. And it's here. we're here for some connection and for your encouragement. When someone wrongs you, deliberately or carelessly, harming you in some way, you have a choice. Either you can choose to hold it against them and demand they suffer for it in the name of justice, of course. <laughs> they must learn a lesson after all. Or you can choose to forgive them and forget it ever happened and treat them with kindness just as if they've never done you any harm before. Now hear me out. I'm not saying we should ignore all criminal, criminal activity and the applicable means of securing justice, but I want you to consider for a moment what God has done for us. God made a choice. Despite all of our shortcomings, our personal rejection of Him, our personal wickedness, selfishness, our lovelessness, our arrogance, our unkindness, our bitterness, our dishonor to others and towards God. The Word says it clearly, all have sinned, all have fallen short of God's standard of glory. That's Romans 3.23. Despite this, God made a choice and he chose kindness, kindness towards you, kindness towards us. He could have condemned us. He could have turned his back on us and walked away and said, that's it. I've had it with mankind. But he chose to love us instead chose to be patient towards us. But he didn't stop there. <laughs> he went further and chose to find a way not just to forgive us, but to release us from our debt towards him. He chose to find a way to drop the case against us altogether, justifying us. Just as if we have never done anything wrong at all. He chose to find a way to release us from the consequences of our wrong actions. He really went all the way. These are the choices God made. He chose to take responsibility, to pay the price for our mistakes and our sins. The cross represents this choice. He chose to send a Savior. That Savior. Through sacrificing his son, Jesus, he made a way for you and me to be restored. Restored in our design, in terms of what we were designed to be, in terms of what we've been created to be. He chose to make a way to restore us. Jesus says, I am the way. 
John 14, verse 6. Jesus is this way for you and I to be restored. Talk about going the extra mile. The word says in Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and fall short. And then it goes on in verse 24. And we are justified freely by his grace. I'd love to read it from the message. It says, God sacrificed Jesus on the altar of the world to clear the world of sin. Having faith in him sets us in the clear. God decided, God decided, he chose on this course of action in full view of the public to set the world in the clear with himself through the sacrifice of Jesus. Finally taking care of the sins he had so patiently endured. Why did he do this? What was his motive? The word is very clear. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. I want to remind you this morning, you are God's choice. He's chosen you and he has paid a price for you to be restored. So this cross is a demonstration, the demonstration of his choice, this choice, God's choice. He chose the best for you. He chose life for you. It's still his choice for you today. The Apostle Paul wrote these words in his letter to the Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1. And I'm going to read from verse 3. It says, how blessed is this God and what a blessing he is. He's the father of our master, Jesus Christ, and takes us to the high places of blessing in him. Long before he laid down earth's foundations, he had us in mind. I just want to say this whole plan of salvation and redemption, it's not an afterthought. You are not an afterthought. He and you and me in his heart way back at the beginning before he created this world it says from before he laid down earth's foundations he had us in mind and settled on us as the focus of his love ah, to be made whole and holy by his love like i said he chose the best he hasn't just chosen to rescue us. He's chosen our wholeness. His plan for you and me is the whole package. To be made whole and holy. And holy means to be separated from anything that's ugly and wicked. His plan is the best. And this by his love. Long, long ago, he decided to adopt us into his family through Jesus Christ. What pleasure he took in planning this. That word adoption means to be instated in your full rights as a son, as a daughter in his household. Well, this weekend, we remember his cross. We remember the cross of Christ. We remember the price he paid. You only have to go and read the gospel story. Go and read the last few chapters of the gospel of Luke and see what Jesus had to go through, what he had to suffer to secure this price, to secure payment for our release. It was no easy price to pay. And then today we get to celebrate his resurrection from the grave. Why? What is the value of this resurrection? What is its significance? Well, 
it's just part of the deal of his acquittal of our wrongs. Romans 4.25 says it this way, Who was betrayed and put to death because of our misdeeds and was raised to secure our justification, our acquittal, making our account balance and absolving us from all guilt before God. Making our account balance and absolving us from all guilt before God. He was raised to secure our justification. The word says he actually went into heaven with his own blood and poured it on the altar as proof of his payment for our sin. You have a choice this morning. You can choose to receive all that he has planned for you. This morning, Shannon has prepared something as well. We've got the cup and we've got the bread. And uh, I'm going to ask her just to share shortly before I go further. Good morning, everybody. Such a blessing to be with you all again. And um, I'm just so blessed by what Paula shared um, already this morning. I found myself in this week just chewing over um, this Easter weekend and what Jesus has done for us on the cross his death, his burial, his resurrection. And I just find my heart just saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Um, and so just wherever you are at home, where you're watching this from, uh, I really just trust that there's just such a song of thanksgiving that's rising in your heart. If you have given your life to Jesus and you know him personally, that there's just such a thankfulness. And maybe even just to pause a moment and to remember that moment when you made that commitment, that choice, as Paul shared, Jesus chose you, but there was a time when you chose him. Um, and to remember that moment, I, I was thinking back on, for me, that it was when I was five years old um, in Sunday school, my Sunday school teacher in a Methodist church in Empangani in KwaZulu-Natal uh, shared the gospel with us as children. And I responded to Jesus. And I gave my life to him. So whether you five or the kids out there, if you five or if you're 55 or if you're 95, it doesn't matter. Jesus's call goes out to each one of us. His love is so real. And uh, may you remember back to that precious moment of your encounter with Jesus. Or may today be that precious encounter moment for you with Jesus. But I'm really excited about what Paul shared because it so confirms what was on my heart this week. Mm. And I'm going to read to you from John chapter 3, from verse 14. This is Jesus speaking. He was speaking to Nicodemus. And Jesus is saying, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And uh, Jesus there in verse 14, he, he uh, links himself to a story that happens in the Old Testament. It actually happens in Numbers chapter 21 from verse 4 to 9. And you can go and read that for yourselves. But it's a very amazing story. The Israelites are being plagued by fiery serpents. And that sounds pretty scary to me. Mm. I don't think I'd like to, a plague of fiery serpents. Um, and they turn and they repent and they come before the Lord. They come before Moses and they ask for help. Um, and uh, Moses goes to the Lord and says, Lord, what must we do? And God says, make a pole and put a snake out of bronze on this pole and lift it up. And when anybody is bitten by the snake, all they need to do is come out, look at that pole with the snake on it, and they will be saved. Um, and Jesus is, is saying, as Moses lifted up the snake, the snake, so I am lifted up. That anyone who looks to me, anyone who believes in me, will be saved. The verse actually says, will not perish, but have eternal life. Um, and I just so love the relationship between these two stories because there was nothing that someone who was bitten by the snake needed to do. 
They didn't need to run around their tent 10 times or pat themselves on the head 40 times or recite the Torah or uh, there, there wasn't a whole list of things they needed to do. It was so simple. The price had been paid. The pole was lifted. The snake was on the pole. The curse had been put on, um, on that pole. And all they needed to do was acknowledge, I need your help, Lord. Mm. Save me, touch me. Yeah. And that is the beautiful message we celebrate this Easter weekend, is that Jesus was lifted up, as Paul has shared. The sin of the world was put on him. My sin, your sin, was put on him. Um, and that all I need to do is actually just receive that beautiful gift. And mm. that's why my, my heart is so thankful because he reached me. Mm. He touched me. He saved mm. me. Uh, I just needed to believe in him and receive. Mm. Um, and so if you've done that, that's beautiful. May you celebrate that fact that God chose you and now you've received that gift. You've taken that simple step to receive that gift. But if you haven't, then you would pause and know that his call is going out to you this mm. morning. And there's nothing fancy you need to do. You need to repent of your sins, say, sorry, Lord, I've been living life my own way. But today I'm looking to the cross. I'm seeing what you've done. I'm acknowledging that I need you today. Yeah. And I'm choosing you and I'm asking you, Jesus, to be the Lord of my life. And if you've done that, kids, if you're watching this, even if you're five, you can pray that prayer with mom and dad today mm. and ask Jesus to forgive you and come into your life. Our beautiful grandparents who are sitting there, if you've never done that, you, even if you're old, can humble your heart and say, God, mm. I need you to be my savior. And of course, yes. all the rest of us in between. And we can receive this beautiful gift. So I just bless you. I bless the celebration as we remember what he's done for us, that his salvation is real and it's powerful, and we get to celebrate him this morning. And um, just the other part of that, as I was chewing over this in this week, um, I had an image of snakes under sand, like hidden in the sand. Um, and I just feel this is a word of knowledge or, or um, just a, a word for somebody out there. And maybe even before we went into this whole season of lockdown, there were underlying hidden issues. I want to say fiery serpents hidden in the sand that have been plaguing your life. Maybe it's been an underlying illness, really serious illness. Maybe it's been financial lack even before we hit Corona and now the added stress of maybe not being able to, to provide for your family. Maybe there's been relational issues. Maybe it's been loneliness or depression or fear or anxiety, just things hidden in the sand. I want to say in that same Jesus that saves us, that when we look to that cross, that serpent up on the pole, Jesus dying and taking our place, as Paul shared, it's not only for our salvation, it's for our healing. Hmm. So if there is an underlying issue of ill health in your life, you will look to Jesus and call on Jesus today. His healing is available to you. If there is lack in your life, I believe it's a season really where Jesus can intervene and you'll see miraculous provision for your need because I believe Jesus on the cross died to take the curse of poverty. Mm. Um, if there's loneliness or anxiety or fear or depression, whatever your need is, if you'll say, Lord, I don't want the fiery serpents, even if they're hidden in the sand and nobody else knows about it, I don't want these fiery serpents in my life. I'm looking to the cross. And I thank you that I can acknowledge today that your blood, Jesus, is enough to deliver me, to save me, to heal me, to make me whole. Mm, and, and so as you consider, I hope as families, those of you got the message to prepare some communion, that um, just as you consider taking the communion, if you don't have wine and, and, and bread, you can uh, grab some juice. Uh, just something that would be symbolic today to represent it and take the time, pause, maybe even share what, with one another as a family your salvation testimony. Maybe your children have never heard how you gave your life to Christ. Mm. Pause, celebrate what the blood and the bread means for you mm. and share it as a family. Enjoy that time of being thankful to what God has done um, and what this represents. So I bless you. Mm. The Lord loves you. May you be so full of joy in this Easter season. Maybe, Shannon, just before you 
share the elements. Um, we're going to pray over this right now. But uh, I think it's significant that this Passover has happened in the midst of a pandemic. Just like the fact that Jesus is the light in the darkness. <laughs> and um, there's a choice for you and I this morning. You might be in lockdown like we are here in Bloemfontein, South Africa. Uh, we have restrictions placed on us. You might feel your choice has been taken away. I want to say to you this morning that you are powerful. You have the ability to choose this morning. One of the most significant things you can do is to choose what Jesus has done for you mm. as your answer. This body and this blood, his body broken, which is represented by this broken bread, this cup, which represents his shed blood. This is something you can choose to receive today. You can choose to receive the impact of his sacrifice on your soul, on your life. You can choose, and that's what you need to do. You can choose to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Father God. I choose to accept that Jesus is my Savior, that He deserves my honor, that He deserves my respect and my gratitude this morning. So I want to lead you in a prayer. If you've never accepted Christ as your Lord, as your Savior, you can do it, as Shannon said, by a simple prayer. And I'm going to lead you in that prayer right now. Why don't you pray with me? Father God, creator of this world, I'm asking you to look at me this morning as your child. I accept my need of saving, my need to be saved. I accept that there is nothing that can pay the price for my sin and my shortcoming, especially my sin against you. I choose to take this good news that is preached to me in the Bible, that Christ was given as an offering for my sin, that though I fall short of the glory of God, I can be justified freely through the redemption that is in Christ by faith, by believing in Him. I make that choice today, Jesus, I choose you as my Savior. Will you wash me in your blood? Will you forgive me of my sin? And will you become the Lord and Savior of my soul? I pray this in faith, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you've prayed that prayer, you're ready to receive the elements that we're about to share with you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Shane. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say as well that um, in that story about the, the snake on the pole being lifted up, when you were bitten by the snake, you had to go and look out at that pole. Uh, I couldn't send and say, oh, Paul, please go and look at the snake for me. Um, or mom and dad, please go and look at the snake for me. I had to go and look at that snake on the pole and then I was healed. Um, so just again, that, that call of Jesus is very personal. Kids, mom and dad can't do it mm. for you. Husband or wife, your partner can't do it for you. Exactly. Moms or dads, your kids can't do it for you. It's that personal choice. And so I just bless each one of you mm. in your personal relationship with Jesus. And then lastly, just as we close and then take communion, um, as a leadership team, we've been looking at some declarations and um, mm. they come from Steve Backland, Igniting Hope Ministries. You can go and find the whole list of uh, declarations on his site. Um, we'll put the link underneath for those of you who'd like to look at it. But I just want to read these declarations over you, um, especially Hebron Church. I just bless you today with these declarations in this season. Mm. And I encourage you, let's be making positive declarations over this season. So our declarations for today are, in every situation I face, there is always a solution. 
This season is an hour of great opportunity, supernatural provision, and breakthrough for me and those that I am close to. God is comforting, strengthening, healing, and providing for those who have been negatively impacted by the coronavirus. I am experiencing increased levels of intimacy with the Lord at this time. So we just bless you, Paul and I. We bless you in Jesus' name. Absolutely. With comfort and strength and healing mm. and provision for whatever need that you're facing. Mm. Um, and if you go and look up those declarations, you'll see there's some beautiful scriptures. You can go and read the stories around those de declarations. And ask Jesus, Jesus, thank you for a declaration over my situation mm. that I'm facing personally. Okay. So we're going to end. We're going to let you as a family have your communion at home. You can go and read 1 Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 23 together and then share the blood and the body of Christ and enjoy one another's testimonies and what Jesus has done for you. So God bless. Have a wonderful Easter Sunday further. Bye for now. Bless you. Bye-bye for now.